thank you for joining us this day. We're looking at nature. We're looking at how in this pandemic, where is God in all of this? As autumn leads on to winter, it's a wonderful time to see the changing colour of the trees slowly losing their leaves. But is it a sign of demise, of death or new growth? We hope you can remain with us throughout this time. But if time is of the essence for you, we offer the opportunity to stop, to pause and reflect on what's been said. Or you might wish to stop the video just where you are and rejoin us later when it's more convenient for you or jump direct to the part you want to discover and we'll offer you the opportunity later. For those who may not wish to say prayers, there are other aspirations of hope through God, so I hope that you can join it with us as we pray, even if you don't believe in God. Here we'll discuss in this pandemic of that possible loss, where is God? We'll invite you to have the opportunity to speak with God in a conversation in the comfort of wherever you find yourself. And we'll offer opportunity to show God's love to others. Let's turn to Psalm 1, 2, 3. Psalm 123 I lift my eyes to you, to you who sits enthroned in heaven, as the eyes of the slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a female slave look to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord, our God, till he shows us mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us. For we have endured no end of contempt. We have endured no end of ridicule from the arrogant, of contempt from the proud. As I walk through these leaves on the ground and hear the rustling sounds of autumn, the leaves fall all around me in glorious colours to the floor. This strong, tall trunk draws its nourishment from the ground through the roots that anchor it deep into the soil. As I follow up that trunk, the golden sun glows and lights up everything around it. My eyes are drawn to the branches and the swirling golden leaves that fall all around me. I'm drawn up into the tops of the tree. I'm reminded that it will soon be bare and look almost dead as winter approaches. This tree hides a secret reserve though that continually feeds it until new growth appears in spring and sprouts new life. This is the start of a new cycle and as the summer heat gains strength, the tree stands proud in all its fullness. Blossom follows in beautiful pinks and whites, showing its beauty. And as autumn approaches again with its cold, icy fingers, that completes the cycle and a new one begins again. We too change with the seasons and wait on God, drawing our nourishment from him and his love. We then pass that love on to the people we meet and glorify God as we walk alongside others. So the next time we see, like the psalmist, a tree, I invite us to stop, to look up, to wait and to ask God to nourish us, to fill us, and to show us how to glorify him and show his beauty to the world. When we speak to God, where is God? God is in creation, as the trees clap their branches together when the wind blows through them. God is in the seeds, as they disperse their nourishment, giving new growth. God is there as those seeds bear fruit. God is in us too, as we show God's love to others, allowing them to draw closer to God. If science is informational, then God is transformational. 
God is in us and gives us words to encourage one another and to build each other up. God is everywhere, sitting beside us, listening to us and answering us night and day. We will have that opportunity to speak to God in a few moments time. God walks beside us however we're feeling and wherever we are. God will never leave us. God, to you we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the beauty of each hour of the day and of God, to you we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's dear. God, to you we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, on earth and friends above, pleasures pure and undefiled. Gracious God, to you we raise this our sacrifice of God, to you we raise this our sacrifice of praise. Here are our prayers of adoration and confession. Living God, we gather in your presence to worship you. May our worship join with all creations, praising you according to its kind. We celebrate the beauty and importance of the trees that you have made. 
May the worship of the hearts be reflected in the worship of our lives, so that we enable the trees of the field to clap their hands, and the trees of the forest to sing for joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the words of the prophet Joel. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. The vine is dried up and the fig tree is withered. The pomegranate, the palm and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are dried up. Surely the people's joy is withered away. Look around you. Can you see God's creation on its knees? Burning forests, dried up rivers. O oh, my people, weep with me. O oh, Creator God. Vine and fig tree bear no fruit. People dying, wildlife too. Called to care for God's creation, we have failed to follow you, O oh, Mother God of creation. Forgive us, Holy God. Hear our prayer. Help our lives to show your care, planting seeds of hope and healing. Share your life throughout the earth, O oh, Father God. Spirit of God, you make all things new, causing seeds to grow, buds to blossom, fruit to ripen. Sow within us the seeds of repentance and humility, to live gently within the community of creation, and to bring forth the fruit of your kingdom of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May, May we, we know, know of your, your loving, loving forgiveness. forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Here is an opportunity to talk with God. We might have recollections from our childhood that God is distant, possibly way above us, literally. To whom we give a list of requests. We believe that God is present with us now, here even in such times of a pandemic. Possibly we need to give us space for that conversation. So we invite you now to get comfortable possible. Might we invite you to sit with your back supported, your feet planted firmly on the floor. If you can, have your hands empty so we can give ourselves totally to this space. As we breathe in, let's just savour that breath filling our lungs. As we breathe out, we can relax. Those doubts, issues which might be dragging us down at this time, let's leave them for a moment. Let's put them down. We can pick them up later if we wish to, but for the moment, let us, let us figuratively breathe those tensions out with every breath that we take. We invite you to look at the picture on the screen. Let our eyes look at every aspect of the image, let them dance around. Looking at the wide array of colours. As we start to look around, where are we standing in this picture? Is it near the tree? Along the path? The far end, maybe? Or at a distance, looking at this scene? Regardless, can we feel the leaves under our feet? It's slippery or can we feel the leaves crunch under our feet what 
out of the spells we can detect. What might the smell of a myriad of trees be like? Can we smell the leaves starting to decompose perhaps? It might well bring back memories of the past for us. As we look at this picture, what are the sounds of this neck of the woods? Can we imagine the wind through those trees? Or possibly, some wildlife flitting through the branches, birds or, or even squirrels perhaps. What can we see in this picture? As we look down the path, we focus upon a particular area which takes our interest. Jesus is standing next to us. What would you like to say to Jesus about what we can see? How might Jesus respond to your comment? say to Jesus about our current situation, your current circumstances. Speak to Jesus now as a friend. Share. How might Jesus respond to your comment? We can return here or anywhere to speak with Jesus. So know that this isn't the last opportunity. But for now, let's bid our goodbye as we return to our room. One Thessalonians chapter five, verses one to eleven. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and let us be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing.
This passage tells of Paul's letters to the Thessalonians. This is the first letter of the New Testament, written decades earlier in some of the Gospels. Paul was writing to the folk he'd only recently visited, and they were getting a bit disillusioned by now. Things weren't happening as they were expected. It sounds quite apt currently. Our expectations for 2020 haven't really been met, have they? Paul explains that previously they may have felt peace and secure, but now there appears no escape. But they are not in darkness. I found it strange as Methodists to be asked to be sober. The call here is to live as disciples, to follow God and to encourage all others. So we may build them up as they journey through all that life throws at them. The trees in the summer look great, splendid, even majestic sometimes. As autumn arrives and the rain falls, the whole demeanour changes. The leaves start to change colour and they start to fall. But that's not our call to also fall. The tree itself is not dying. Put away that thought that it's in demise. It is transforming. It is regenerating from within to support further life in the new season that lies ahead. We may find some seasons difficult. As a school teacher in the past, we used to know this month as no, no, November. Would it ever end? And then, then it did. We'd have a whole of December to go as well. But then the head teacher took us aside and said, look at the children. Think of their potential. It needed a different perspective. Then we could see that with encouragement, our teaching changed. And so with this pandemic, everyone needs encouragement. Everyone will vary day by day, week by week, especially as Christmas expectations rise. Be there for people, listen to their issues and encourage them on what can be achieved. As we had that opportunity to cast our issues upon Jesus in conversation wherever we are, we might also listen to Jesus' response of encouragement, of love to all. Look for that continued growth in the trees. Look for the continued development in the lives of others and of ourselves. Let us pray for others. Gracious God, like the strength of great trees, we pray that world leaders would have the wisdom to lead for the well-being for all and not prosperity for a few. Like the gentle dapple of sunlight through the trees, we pray that the church offers hope and peace for eternity as an alternative to the fast-paced commercialism of now. Like the canopy of leaves which gives cover to creatures below, we pray for protection for those who face uncertainty of economic struggles, unemployment or illness. Like the roots of the trees which grow deep into the ground, we pray that our faith is firmly rooted in our Lord Jesus, that we would be spirit-filled people who show wisdom, offer hope, peace and protection. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we come to our takeaway. We've heard readings from the Bible, songs and explanations, all giving us messages of God's love. But now it's time to consider how can we practically apply this every day in our lives? I have here four leaves taken from the tree to give us some encouragement that simple acts can bring joy, peace, love to the people we meet. So this first leaf asks us to invite someone to go for a walk, to soak up creation and all of God's beauty. Our next leaf asks us to write a letter or an email of encouragement. Thirdly, why not ring or contact someone on Zoom? and listen. Pray with them. Encourage them to ring another person to pass this message of God's love on. 
And lastly, why not send someone a small gift? It could be a poem or a picture that you've created yourself, or something as simple as a plant that you grew. All these acts of love show the person that they are valued and loved by God and by us. We're moving on to our last hymn, number 545, Be Thou My Vision. the wind blows and the rain comes let's offer a blessing may the word which is God has spoken to us individually take root in our hearts and grow stronger in our life so it can bear fruit for God's kingdom and may the blessing of God the Father and the Mother of us all the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and with all whom we love and with all God's creation now and evermore Amen <laughs>